All right, everyone, and welcome to the show. This is Sharing with Shell Shock. I am your host, Shell Shock Prime. And tonight, we have a new topic to talk about, which is gaming's guilty pleasures. And this topic is all about, like, our own guilty pleasures in video games. We have our own we would like to share. First, I'm going to introduce both of my guests. First, I have Okami Hylia. Hi, Okami. Hey. Uh, it's good to be here for the first time. I'm sorry. I, I, I've only done one other podcast in my life. No worries. I lost for work. No worries. It's all good. It's good to have you. And also, <laughs> returning for the second time, we have Mr. Ben. Hi, Ben. How you doing? All right. How's it going, man? It's going great. Glad to, glad to be here like with you guys. As we talk about our guilty pleasures, like we have a lot, like we have a lot that I, I know I have a lot that I want to talk about myself, but, um, but hopefully everything's going well with you. Um, first of all, like welcome everyone coming in from in the chat. Hopefully everybody's doing very well. Um, so, um, so before we actually get started on talking about talking about our guilty pleasures, let's start. Let's start asking. Um, what do you? What type of content do you do? Starting with you, Okami. Like in general? Yeah. Unrelated to guilty pleasures. Unrelated, like your like your streaming okay. content and everything. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, I am a variety streamer. Uh, so lately, it's been a lot of visual novel games lately. Uh, so that has been a lot of fun. Um, but I stick to a lot of Nintendo titles sometimes. RPGs if I get the chance um, it's all over the place um, but also I'm a member of a couple of charity um, charity marathon events like Zeldathon Kirbython uh, and Minikit Marathon so like my content is all over the place um, like I say I just got into some simulator games too so nothing's off the table basically with me yeah yeah <laughs> yeah because I know that you've done a lot of charity stuff for the past couple of years it's been really cool yeah, we just wrapped up the St. Jude Play Live campaign um, for the second time um, on my own, which was, it was really fun. Um, that was mainly Kirby and the Forgotten Land trying to get all the Waddle Dees. Um, going through the Ace Attorney series, I have, I'm going through Ace Attorney Investigations 2, which has not had a localized um, appearance yet here. Um, but yeah, it was like that and a little dinosaur game called Parkosaurus. I've been bouncing all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And and I know that you've been here before, Ben, but can you remind us what type of content you do? So I'm basically in the same boat as she is. I'm a variety streamer on Twitch, uh, mainly focusing on retro content at the time. Uh, I am currently doing a playthrough of Paper Mario with a Thousand Year Door. Nice. Uh, every Sunday. Uh, I am currently have a pull-up on my Discord on what game I'm going to be switching to next after Thousand Year Door, whether that be Jedi Fallen Order or uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, and currently Zelda is currently in the lead. Mm -hmm. uh, last I checked. Yes. Um, beyond that, though, uh, I do, am also part of another couple of stream teams, one of which does... Uh, we, did our, we did do a charity event ourselves not too long ago. Um... Uh, how long has it been? Has it been a couple months now? At least, yeah. at least three or four. Right. Um, we are planning on doing another stream event at some point in the future, but uh, nothing concrete has of right now. We haven't really haven't even decided on a decided on a date yet. Yeah. On when that's going to be happening. All right. But uh, sometime in the future, at some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, if Shane Mega Man Zero didn't get more votes, yeah. I I, I do plan on covering that at some point in the future, the series of uh, Mega Man Zero 1 through 4, uh, eventually. But oh, yeah. I couldn't tell you like what time I'm going to be doing that. Those are great uh, games. Th there's so many games on the to-do list, just not enough time to do it, especially since I only stream like once a week. <laughs> yeah, oh, believe me, I know. Ends. <laughs> it, yeah, H hence the fact that I have a series, Backlog Fantasy. Backlogs never end. Like, I just... Have to keep playing games. I have a huge bucket list of games that I still have to get through, including games that like people know in particular, like people know and love, but also some games that not everybody knows, or some games that are 
considered to be like kind of mediocre to bad, but I still kind of like it anyway. And that's why I'm here today. We're going to talk about guilty pleasures because some games we may like that not everyone likes, but there's also some moments that we like as well that, or some other things about certain games that we like. <laughs> we got a lot to talk about. So first thing, first things first, um, is that, um, like I want to know like everyone's guilty pleasures in video games, but before we act before before I get to both of you guys, um, for anyone that wants to know what is a guilty pleasure, a guilty pleasure is something like a medium, like a film, television, or in this case, video games, um, like that one enjoys despite understanding that it is not generally held in high regard, or is seen as an unusual or weird, and we like some stuff that's very weird, we like some stuff that's very odd. And even if some people consider some games to be pretty bad, but we still like it anyway for one reason or another, no problem with that. No problem. No shame. No problem at all. Um, so let's start with you, Okami. What are your guilty pleasures? Let's start with you. Oh, do you just want me to throw them out there or do you want me to start with one? <laughs> start, start with one. Okay, so... People are automatically probably going to scream as soon as I mention this series. Um, Echo the Dolphin, no! I, I think, has a very, very uh, big reputation for being a game that's only probably a guilty pleasure because of how difficult it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in oh, particular, um, in particular, I'm not even talking about the original or Tides of Time, although I'm probably one of the five people out there that want a Tides of Time sequel proper. Because <laughs> it leaves off all of the cliffhanger, and I'm like, why do you do this? Um, oh, yeah. But <laughs> I'm referring to my favorite one in the series, which is one people don't talk about. They talk about the first two. They never talk about this one, but it's Echo the Dolphin, Defender of the Future for the PlayStation 2. Oh, yeah, that one. I was about to say Echo Jr.? No, I <laughs> yeah, but not Echo Jr. Echo <laughs> that's, Jr. The one, that's the one I skip. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that one is also, you know, a lot of people don't talk about the one on the PS2. I don't know if at the time it just wasn't advertised enough. Um, if the series was particularly well known or not, because I just remember I was a kid going to my dad's on weekends and just playing Echo the Dolphin on the PlayStation 2. <laughs> like, and even my dad, um, who's a grown adult, who had to help me get through Rusty Bucket Bay as a child, could mm. not get through Echo the Dolphin on the PS2. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. was pretty funny seeing him freak out because I'd be stuck at every turn. And even as an adult now, I still get stuck a lot, but I still love that game. Yeah. Um, it's just so, I, for me, there's, yeah, difficulty, you know, I don't like, it's kind of funny coming from me, because, like, when people are like, are you ever going to play Dark Souls or Elden Ring? And I'm like, no, those games are too hard. I'm too scared to play Nier Automata, because I hear it's too hard. Um, and yet people are like, well, you play Echo the Dolphin. And I'm like, okay, but I've had years of experience with that game. There's a difference. Mm. Like, for me, that is... <laughs> Very good point, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, Echo the Dolphin is, I, like, it's like, it's like you, you like Echo the Dolphin. For me, I don't. I've actually had, like, ver a very bad experience playing Echo the Dolphin, like, the original one on the Genesis, and oh my god, like, you could easily get lost at points, and trying to figure out exactly what you need to do, um, sometimes they don't really explain it very well, like, there are hints, but sometimes they can actually throw you off. But I've never played Tides of Time. I've never played. I never really. I didn't really play Echo Junior. Or um, which one was the one you said for PS2? Of the future. It's kind of like a soft yeah. reboot. Yeah, that one. Yeah, I never played that one either. And it was also on the Sega Dreamcast. Um, but it was. I forgot. Yeah, but yeah, like um, Echo the Dolphin is definitely one I know. Like. There's some people, because the thing is, people love that game, but I don't. And I know there are people who don't really like that game, but but yeah, that's definitely a guilty pleasure you have. Um, uh, we'll go back and forth on guilty pleasures. Um, ben, what's yours? So, I mentioned this in another, I, th I think this was yours, uh, Discord. It was. Uh, and some people will 
disagree with me on this being a guilty pleasure. Um, but one of mine was actually Final Fantasy X-2. And a lot, and the only reason I say that is because uh, people would be like, wait a minute, you like the dress-up game of the Final Fantasy series? And I'm like, yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> I mean, like, I Funny enough, people... I was thinking of that game too when I was making my list, but I was like, is that considered a guilty pleasure for Final Fantasy? <laughs> Uh, I'm willing to say that it is, and and that's only because of the fit way that um, a lot of people. I mean, I've seen some opinions on Final Fantasy X too, um, about like you know you only have three characters throughout. The, I mean, unlike most Final Fantasy games where you get like a, a practically a plethora of three of characters, uh, X2 only locks you into Pain, Yuna, and Riku, and those are the only characters you ever get throughout the entire game. And mm -hmm. a lot of people that I notice uh, just don't really care for the dress beer mechanic when it's really just a, well, if you'll pardon the pun, a dressed up version of the job class system that was introduced from Final Fantasy V. Or Final Fantasy III, technically. But yeah. Final Fantasy. Introduced in three, but refined in five. Right. So. Uh, Final Fantasy XV is a guilty pleasure. <laughs> um. <laughs> I will not argue that either. Um, I actually had that game. I've been meaning to play that. I've actually did start up of that some time ago, and I only got past the tutorial area, and I then I got distracted and never came back to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> story of my Funny life. Funny you brought up Ten Two, just because I had played through that game all the way to the end, and I feel so horrible because I got to the final boss. Literally, it had a tick of health left. I think I did something really dumb that I shouldn't have. And the boss kicked my butt, and then I refused to pick it up again because I was so salty afterwards. Yeah, I've been there. I've been there. Yeah, I've been I've been there with other games. Not that one because I have not played Ten Two or Ten for that matter. I hope to play that at some point soon. Um, but um, but yeah, like, but yeah, Ten Two like as a guilty pleasure. Yeah, because I remember like Ten Two was not as well received as Ten was when it came out. Like, it, it was overly hyped. That I remember. But I don't remember seeing a lot of people, like, saying they loved it at the time. People, I mean, now they do. But back then, like, not so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm having the smaller party because I kind of... There's nothing wrong with a big party either. But when you have a smaller party, I think it's easier for the story to make sure everybody kind of has equal character development. Whereas the bigger your party, like, in a JRPG, it, like, I love Persona 5 to death yeah. but even i'll say I it's so hard to give yeah. everyone yeah. um proper time oh yeah um but yeah like I'll, I'll throw off one guilty pleasure so far like well for now like before we start like moving along with more guilty pleasures um uh let's see for me um like i know that this is like an nes game and i know that this gets a lot of hate for the simple fact that um it, it's really hard, and it has an, an infamous level that people always talk about. But for me, um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES, the one where like it has the infamous swimming level in that dam, um, I like it. Oh, I know what you're talking about, yeah. I like the game. I know it gets a lot of hate, and the reason it gets... A, I think the reason a lot of people seem to really hate it is because of the one review that was made by Angry Video Game Nerd like so many years ago, and um, and then a lot of people were like, yeah, this game sucks. It really doesn't suck. Is it is it is it like the best NES game? No, it's not. But I thought it was fun. I had fun with it. It's hard. I will say that. I'll give I'll give people that. It's hard, but I still had a great time with it, and I still think that. Um, it's a game worth playing, especially now that it's going to be re-released in the Cowabunga Collection on all platforms. So if you haven't played it yet, try it out. But it's very hard. I will say that. But that's a guilty Dan, pleasure. I understand what people say, you know. So that game gets a lot of flack for being quote-unquote difficult, right? Yeah. Yet The Legend of Zelda, which I don't need to explain how how loved that game is, but the first game... Y'all, if you didn't have a walkthrough back then, 
how did you do? <laughs> like, how come that game that's really hard and didn't, you know, it was the same thing with Echo. Um, you weren't explicitly told what to do. You could be doing something for hours trying to figure something else. But then why does TMNT get flat, but Zel Zelda 1 doesn't? Because I don't understand that. <laughs> I don't mean to cut you off, but that was the next top... That was the next game I was going to mention for my guilty pleasure. Um, I fucking love Zelda 1. Um, forgive my... Forgive my language. No, go ahead. But um, Zelda 1 is probably one of the... Zelda 1 is my, my absolute gateway game into the Zelda franchise. That was the game that I started playing with my mom back when I was still like three, four years old. Yeah. And yeah, we still... We did have to use a guide. Don't get me wrong. We did have to use a guide to kind of get us through the game. But that was the game that birthed my love for the Zelda series. And it is a game that even now at 35, I will still go back to and play again and again and again, just for the hell of it. Right. And I will, I will freely admit that for its for its mechanics, it has not aged well. It has not. Yeah. But it is that... still in the, such a nostalgia trip that I will, I don't, don't mind it at all. Yeah. So. All right. So, what is your next guilty pleasure, Okami? Oh, here, which one do I want to bring up? Because I have notes here. I probably should have had that up before we started. <laughs> Lying in bed at like 5 a.m. wondering what my pleasures are. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, some of these, it's like really hard for me to say if it's a guilty pleasure or not. Um, this one I can say for sure is a guilty pleasure. Um, the Legend of Spyro series as a whole. Oh, really? Although the, the third one is my absolute favorite, though. But yeah, the series as a whole, um, the second one is my least favorite. I Here's the thing. I, I grew up with Spyro, so I can understand it was such a departure from the original games. I can understand why people didn't like it, and especially the first two. Um, the gameplay can get very repetitive. Uh, I mean, granted, you do get different, like, breath powers and things like that, but, like, the kind of like the hack and slash kind of... Um, almost like kind of like Warriors gameplay. That's just how you damage all the enemies in the game. Yeah. But what really got to me was the story is what hooked me throughout that entire series. And the third game I really love because they added so much more. The second game they added time mechanics. Um, the third game you could actually fly, which was never done in Spyro before. You could glide, but you can like free fly through levels. And uh, let me tell you, when that game came out, it blew my mind. Um. And like I said, I mean, you got really great voice actors in that series, like Mark Hamill, Elijah Wood, that really sold the performance to on top of the story that I really liked. Even if it's not the most um, mind-blowing story, I mm -hmm. felt for the characters, and I got really attached to them. Yeah. I will also admit, I did like the swapping mechanic as well that the third game gave. Because um, not only did you have Spyro, but you could also play Cinder for the first time. And nice. she also had her own set of powers, if I'm not mistaken. So, With, were... like, poison, fear, yeah. shadow, I think, and one other. I think wind. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. That's something that, that made her similar to, but distinct from. And it was like, you know, hey, it's actually pretty cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a good way to introduce, like, if you wanted a friend to play with you. And it really did yeah. shake things up a bit, especially with, like, the giant boss. There's this one giant boss that I really love in that game I won't go into, but... um. I say just because it's different, it's not bad. Like I said, the gameplay of the first two didn't age, you know, it's kind of more of the same, but the third game, I, I think, is where the series really shined, and I almost cried at the end. Yeah. I never played, like, the only the only Spyro games I've ever played were the first the first two games, and, yeah. and if you count it, like... The second Skylanders game. I've never, I have not played any other Spyro game beyond that. Though, at some point, I want to do the Reignited trilogy. Um, probably, oh, not, probably not for a while, but it will eventually happen. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about my next guilty pleasure. Um, my next guilty pleasure for me, um, it's another game on the NES, and this game does get a lot of hate. Well, well. Not as not as much as Ninja Turtles did, but it's got its fair share of hate. Um, but it's definitely nowhere near the worst game in its series. Um, it has some good ideas, and I feel like it did kind of shape things up a bit for future games. 
Um, and this game is Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest. So the thing about this game is people seem to not like it because of the fact that you have to go around like different areas. Like it's not like a traditional Castlevania where it's just you go from one straight path and you have to keep going till you fight a boss. No, instead you have to go from town to town, you have to grind hearts, but in this game, hearts are currency as opposed as opposed to using it for your weapon. Like, you actually have unlimited use for your sub-weapons. And the thing about this game is, it's kind of like an early, an early attempt at a Metroidvania for Castlevania. And this game, this game is actually really good. However, there are some flaws. One of the biggest flaws, especially if you're playing the North American version of the game, is that the hints they give you, they throw you, they throw you off. Like, they're not really good at hints. And especially, if anything, like, a lot of the characters are more or less just rude or just try to brush you off. But at the same time, there are also some moments where, like, you go to any of the castles that you have to go into and fight. Like, like sometimes there's bosses. Sometimes there's not even a boss at all. But there are also points where you have to figure out how you use certain items. And the game does not explain that to you. you um, sometimes they do. But there are other times where they don't explain anything, and you have to figure it out yourself. You have to um, look at a guide, or back then, like if you were a subscriber to Nintendo Power, or you have to call the Nintendo Power hotline just to get like, just like, just like with the Zelda thing that we were just talking about a little while ago. Um, same thing here. You have to call like a hotline just to get through certain areas. And that said, the the game is still pretty pretty solid to play, and also. Um, depending on the weapon you have, the final fight against Dracula is super easy if you have the right weapon. But the game itself, um, it's, I would say it's a guilty pleasure of mine, but I know a lot of people did not like Simon's Quest. Like, kind of like how Zelda 2 is the black sheep, which that's, that's another one right there. Like, Zelda 2 is the black sheep of its series. Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest is definitely up there, like, same thing never played a Castlevania game before admittedly um I don't think watching the anime on Netflix counts <laughs> it, so. it does not do the series justice I will say that oh really like it's it's good but it's not like like I've only seen a few episodes of it it's good but it's not a 100% representative of the series as a whole it's not so the only thing that scared me that you said was that hearts are also currency because I'm really bad at <laughs> stuff like that where i'm just like here take all my health so i can buy everything that would probably be me yeah because because in the main castlevania games usually um hearts would be used for your for your sub weapon um and, and and for health usually it would be like um wall meats like you have to find like a meat r meat randomly in a wall and then like yeah. that's that's your health that's how it is in castlevania <laughs> that's how they usually do it and i'm gonna highlight a I'm gonna highlight a comment. Um, so, one thing that I want to point out. So, yet yeah, Zelda introduced a magic meter, and other systems gains were used from then on. Yes, you're right. Zelda did do that. Um, I don't remember there being a magic meter in the first game, but the second game was the first one to have something like that. And every and practically every game afterwards had have one. Um, for the most part, yeah. But yeah, like that. So that's my that was my next guilty pleasure. Um, Castlevania Two: Simon's Quest. Um, so, what is another one that you have? Um, let's go with you, Okami. Like next one. Okay, so they might start getting a little more like weird from here on out. <laughs> um, I have two that are that are from the same like quote unquote movie franchise. Mm -hmm. But it is. Jurassic Park Trespasser and also uh, Jurassic Park the Telltale game uh, which I mean they both play very differently um, I can tell you in terms of Trespasser um, it was a very rushed game unfortunately mm -hmm. and part of the reason I think I'm only really connected to that game as much as I am is because I grew up with this franchise so you know I think the only thing from this franchise I'm not really connected to is Jurassic Park 3 yeah. Um, 
but uh, Trespasser, for, I had a lot of fun with my dad playing that. It's it's a lot of nostalgia, although, oh gosh, the health meter in that game is so... <laughs> you, you have to look down, and the main character has a tattoo on her chest, and mm-hmm. that's your health meter. <laughs> um, I was just about to say, because I was like, I, I thought I was like, I haven't heard of that game, but then I was like, wait, no. Yes, I have. <laughs> I, I think AVGN did an episode on, and it's not an old episode, it was like maybe... It was not fairly recent, but it was, it's not a super old episode. Um, but they, I think he got an interview with one of the devs and they, they, they basically said, yeah, we were rushed. We planned to have more variety of dinosaurs, but we didn't have the time because you wind up fighting the same raptors over and over <laughs> and over. Um, they plan to have like a bigger final boss. Instead, the final boss is just the big raptor. Yep. <laughs> um, and as far as the Telltale game, I, I think a lot of people don't like the Jurassic Park one in particular because there's like a lot of, even I notice when playing it, I go back and replay it, a lot of prompts, you know, I mean, a lot of people could argue Telltale games aren't really quote unquote games because it's just a, you're watching a movie and pressing buttons. Um, I will admit a lot of the ones in the Jurassic Park one are just really, yeah, they're bad. It's like you're just walking in out of nowhere. You have to press a button just so you don't trip or something. Um, but I really, and I know a lot, I don't like most of the characters, um, a lot of them are really hard to put up with, but again, it, it, you know, that game tried to answer questions, like, from the first movie, what happened to the can of Barbasol, what happened to the embryos that Nedry had before he got eaten, (laughs) you know, (laughs) questions I wanted answers to for years, so that's why I was excited for it, and I do have to admit, a lot of the death scenes in that game, I know they're not supposed to be comedic, but Oh my, oh, oh, bless John Hammond, because <laughs> some of them are really hilarious. I can't crack up. Yes. Um, yeah, like I've never, pl- like the only Jurassic Park game I've ever played, um, there was actually two games that I've actually played. Um, there was a game on the Sega Genesis, which I could never beat the final boss in that. It was very hard. And I never understood what you needed to do in order to beat the final boss, regardless of whether you played as um, as Grant or as um, the Raptor in the game. Um, the other game I've played for Jurassic Park was an arcade game, but it was a re- it was an on rail shooter. You just sit down with you and another person just shooting at a bunch of random like um, dinosaurs that just come right at you. It was made by Sega as well, and it was fun, but. I never got through that game because it was like it was one of those games where it's like once you run out of quarters, that's it. I'm only good at those games because I know them so inside and out. Actually, our local um, bar that also is like an arcade got the Lost World machine, and I got on that so fast. And then I got really salty. I was number two of all time on the machine. <laughs> and I was like, "Who is this person that messed me up?" Yeah, but yeah, like. Um, again, like, but yeah, Jurassic Park has some weird games. Um, so, Ben, what's your next one? Your next guilty pleasure? So, you mentioned, like, the funny game overs, the inadvertently hilarious ones. Yeah. And, uh, this kind of reminds me of this one game. Uh, I don't know this would be considered a guilty... I guess you could consider this a guilty pleasure, considering that this game was also at least in part uh, responsible for the, the creation of the ESRB yeah. um, Night Trap oh god that game what so for those of you who aren't aware of what Night Trap is it's it's a like a sort of a full motion video game where you could technically consider that the action is on rails because the whole thing's a movie from start to finish but uh, it's an interactive movie because there are these campers who are going to share like a like a sort of a cabin or a, a house basically in the um, um, sort of the woods or like I wouldn't really say the mountain but, but definitely a, a wooded area. Uh, well, throughout the night there are like these uh, guys who sneak in to try to kidnap these uh, people who are like uh, this selection of girls for whatever reason. Yeah, and your job is to monitor the security cameras that are stationed up throughout like the parts of the house and trap them as they're you know going through the house. Kind of like a proto Five Nights at Freddy's, if you will, only not. Yeah. 
Um, but one of the things that made it so notable was that if you fail in saving any of the girls, um, your connection to the system is basically broken, and uh, the sergeant who's in responsible and who, who's basically in charge of the operation will and, and immediately come in and he'll fucking ream your ass for it. wow yeah uh, you can even if the, the one of the, one of the funniest things is that um you can get a game over right from the very beginning of the game before you even start because uh you could be watching the system you could be watching the game and the game will prompt you to like swap to the the different camera feed, and if you just sit there and watch him, you know, talk to you, he'll he'll automatically just go like, "I see you're not ready for this mission. I'm cutting I'm cutting the transmission in. Just yank the cord, <laughs> and you can just automatically fail before you even actually start the game." <laughs> wow. Yeah, that that that's insane. Personally, like it because I'm a horror movie buff. And it just kind of reminds me of like that kind of like the eighty slash kind of like the eighty slasher movies, like I, like kind of like corny at times. But I personally like very it. corny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like like there's this one part where you're like trapping the main villains, and uh, he's coming up to one of the the main characters, kind of expositioning, mo- not really half monologuing, but then uh, you hit the button to trap him, and. Uh, the the wall starts going on. He's catching himself. He's like the wall drop. Oh! Yes. <laughs> the whole thing is cheesy as hell. It is. It's very B movie quality. If you've, if you've never played it, I suggest you do at some point. It is I still. Hysterical. I've attempted years ago, but never gone through the whole thing. But I still have to try. I have. I have it on the Switch because it's on Switch. It's on PS4. Um, I think it should also be on Steam as well. Um, yes, I think it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's um, it's on everything. Um, it's because of limited run that it came back. Yeah, yeah. But eventually, I'll have to play Night Trap. I've heard it's like one of those games where it's not great, but people still enjoy playing the game anyway. So I wouldn't mind trying it out. Um, I think it's an important piece of history, like video game history, just because like what what Ben brought up with the whole history of the ESRB, and also I just need somebody to go into Photoshop, take the villains now, and just take the FNAF animatronics and plaster their heads <laughs> on that. Please, oh I will pay God. you. <laughs> well, yeah, like it's like for me, I I will say though, like um, I <laughs> like I do want to try the game out at some point, um. Though I will say, um, I never really got into um, to FNAF, and I personally have no interest in that. But Night Trap, I do have interest in. I would like to try it out at some point. Um, now, as far as other, um, as far as other like um, guilty pleasures that I have, um, there is actually one more that I do want to share real quick. <laughs> um, well. I happen to really, really enjoy like a lot of fighting games, and no, it's not Dead or Alive. Um, not really a big Dead or Alive fan, um, but I happen to really, really enjoy um, a couple of weird fighting games. Not many people seem to really think is actually that good, but. So, I love Street Fighter, but here's the thing. There's an arcade Street Fighter, the movie, the game, and oh my god, the arcade version is just off the rails, balls to the wall. You would not expect it to be, like, like as crazy as it is. Like, the combos are super jank, like, it's full of jank, and you could, you could chain a combo super move into another one, from one special to another, um, the game is really not all that great, but I still have a blast playing it. But the console version is different, and it's nowhere near as good. But the arcade version of Street Fighter, the movie, the game, now that's the stuff right there. And it wasn't even made by Capcom. It was actually made by a developer that Capcom contracted called Incredible Technologies, who are now known for making a lot of casino games in the United States. And they made Street Fighter the movie the game 
And what they did was they had um, digitized actors, because like how Mortal Kombat had had digitized actors back in the day. Like they used made it, they made it look real. And here with Street Fighter, they they did that. They used the actors from the movie, except for except for Bison, because actor Raul Julia, who portrayed Bison, who was also known as um, Gomez Adams in the Adams Family movies. He he passed away after filming of the movie, and when they were going to shoot for um, the digitized scenes, they ended up using one of his stunt doubles to fill in for him. So that's what they ended up doing, and there was a character that was supposed to be in the game, but um, but he was in the movie. Um, the character being T Hawk, um, he was in the movie. His actor in the game in. His actor in the movie was supposed to shoot his um, scenes for the game. And then when they were ready to pick him up from his trailer, everything was gone. And you could and you could see a plane like flying, like a jet, private jet flying back to wherever it was going. So he practically, he pretty much pieced the fuck out. So... Yeah. Sounds like something I would see in a tabloid magazine as I'm checking out at the grocery store. Yes. <laughs> and uh but yeah, Street Fighter the movie the game is very wild. Um like <laughs> it's one of those things where you have to see it to believe it, but when it came out in the arcades, nobody played it. No one played it. Like people were playing Street Fighter Alpha, which was new at the time, but nobody was playing Street Fighter the movie the game. Nobody wanted to play it. They would play skee ball than, than they, they, Street Fighter the movie, the game. They would rather play skee, especially a skee ball machine that's broken. They'll, they would ra- like those people would rather do that than play Street Fighter the movie, the game. That that that's the didn't thing. That, didn't Matt McMuscles actually uh, mention that in his uh, What Happened episode? He did. Yes, he did. Okay. I thought he curiosity, did. curiosity because I don't remember this one. Yeah. It was it was interesting though, but yeah, that's Street Fighter the movie the game. Um, I think AVGN also covered it. Like he covered the console version when he did Street Fighter 2010, but then he did an episode much much later called which is Mortal Kombat ripoffs ripoffs or whatever. He featured it like the arcade version. It, it, it <laughs> it's just so funny just to think about. Like it's funny to talk about because of how ridiculous the game is. But yeah, <laughs> need to talk about just because every time you say the title, I can't help but laugh because I'm like, all right, try saying that three times fast. And I gotta, I gotta bring this up before we move on. Um, for the console version, the Japanese version of the game, you wanna know what they called it? No one will ever guess. They call it Street Fighter, Real Battle on Film. <clears throat> Easier. Why didn't they just go with that for all of them? Because, because the United States probably. Or at least the United States probably thought that it did not make sense, so they were like, you know what, Street Fighter the movie in the game. <laughs> that made more sense! You're just confusing me! Yeah. Like, but yeah, like, that is another guilty pleasure I want to go with, but before, but, but now, like, I want to I wanna ask a question to the both of you. What, okay. is, what are some things in gaming that you guys like to do that you find as guilty pleasures? Like, for example... Um, I know it's debatable about throwing the penguin off the off the cliff in Super Mario sixty four. I know that one's debatable, but um, but I know there's going to be some things in the game that you probably do, like well, in any game that you do, that not many people would probably expect. Uh, well, I was gonna go with that as my example was throwing the penguin off the cliff in Mario sixty four. But since you already took that one, um. I, this is actually funny. I'm going to readdress one I also uh, put up, Night Trap. This might be a bit of a spoiler, uh, considering that this is kind of at the very end of the game here. But yeah. the thing is, you have to have a perfect catch record. Um, and at the very end, the main character, I believe her name is Dana, uh, she turns to the camera and she's like, um, hey, you know, you, you did great. And you also, you did, you did perfect. You know, no one's ever done that before on their first night. You know, hey, and if... Um, you know, we ever get together again, I will be insist that you be the one be acting as my support. Well, she turns around, she begins to walk away. As she does, she walks over a trap. And she turns over her shoulder, she grins at you, and she says, nah, you wouldn't. <laughs> Funny thing is, at that moment, 
there does exist a prompt where you can actually hit the button to trap her right at that exact moment. <laughs> and if you do, she turns around and she's like, No, what are you doing? I thought we were buds. You, you. I was like, how could you stab me in the back like this and you actually see her drop down into oblivion? <laughs> it's such a dick thing to do, but it is so funny to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, um, eventually I'll play that game myself, like... I did. I did see. I did see like a playthrough of the game years ago, but I wouldn't mind playing it myself just to see how well I do. Um, what about you, Okami? Man, this is a hard question you have posed to me because I'm trying so hard to think about something not recent, but the only thing my brain is coming up with right now. So, I I know you. I I know you came in during. Um, you rated me during the Portal stream because I I'm the one of five people that had never played Portal before. <laughs> Yep. So I went into this not even seeing anybody else's playthroughs, but apparently I found a whole bunch of new ways to die that apparently people were telling me they have never seen before. <laughs> and I'm like, am I just that good that I'm bad? Um, you know, because the entire time I didn't know what I was doing. Clearly, puzzle games are just not my forte. Um, but apparently I was finding like a whole bunch of new ways to die. Like I would clip through a portal and then I think something would hit me. I would just jump on a platform. All of a sudden I died even though nothing was around me. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm just really cursed or what, but the joke was going around that I was the pioneer of video of new video game deaths. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't understand. What did I do? I didn't touch the Mario Sunshine water, but how did I die? <laughs> well... I don't know, like, it's it, it it's one of those things where, like, you probably just wanted to try something, and I've, like, for me, it's really hard to pinpoint exactly some of the things I like to do, as I randomly sometimes cheese in some games by, like, just trying to find, just looking at, it's one of those things where you have to be in the moment of a game, where you see, like, one way to go out, but maybe there's another way that you can get through a certain area faster, and but but also at the same time it makes you it makes you look like a fool if you mess it up, and because you're trying you're trying to get through certain games faster, but then all of a sudden you like um, you mess up something like a technique you needed to do or something that looks impossible. I tried so many things and I. I I try to be brave and try to find something I can do, but at the same time, um, I get people telling me, "Well, guess what? You're probably not going to be able to do it. It's impossible. You should you you shouldn't even give it a try." Well, I try it. I it works, um, but I can't pinpoint exactly which one in particular works. But it's one of those things where I have to find out and get to live the moment in the game, just to cheese through some areas. Or if, like, finding another way to beat a boss instead of just using the intended way. Um, but also, if I, had, if I had to think of one thing for myself, something I like to do that um, I find as a guilty pleasure. Alright, well, for example, um, I, I used to be able, like in, in the Pokemon games, at, at least like in the older games, I used to always love just going, going, looking at the Pokedex and just randomly spamming like the um, the Pokemon's cry, like when you hear like their sound, like just over and over again. Especially like some Pokemon, I like I don't know why I did that, but it's something I used to do all the time. I just could not stop. I don't know what got over me at the time, but I just could not stop doing that. Thing of that you posed that question to me is uh, is like um, in Kingdom Hearts before I go fight Seth, uh, Sephiroth, especially in the first game, I just grind to level like ninety nine or whatever it is. I go in that hallway in the hotel. I spend like an hour there after I beat the main story, just just beating up enemies till I'm level ninety nine. Because I'm like I'm not walking into this fight mm -hmm. unless I'm at the top level because I'm not dealing with any time. I hear. I mean that probably goes for a lot of us. Anytime you start hearing the first few notes of the Sephiroth theme, I'm like. Oh no, I'm out. <laughs> I need to. I'm, I need to go. I need to go grind for an hour. I can't do this. My blood pressure's already rising. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. What about you, Ben? So this kind of um, slightly addresses something that was mentioned in chat. 
but also at the same time, kind of going a bit off of what I mentioned before with the Night Trap uh, example, that was just kind of one example. Uh, this is just more of a generalization rather than a bulleted list. But mm -hmm. uh, this is what I kind of like to say, picking the asshole option. Yeah. Where you, you basically are just doing anything like being a jerk. Like what uh, DM said in chat room uh, was to piss off the chickens in the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time uh, by constantly attacking them. Oh, yeah. Um, Mass Effect, where you're talking with the reporter, you have the option to deck her across the jaw. <laughs> you can go ahead and do that. Um, let's say the... Um, Mega Man Legends, after you shoot the serve bots and cook them into a crisp, you have the option, if you don't have a sub-weapon equipped, to literally kick them while they're down. Yep. <laughs> and punch them across the, punch them across the area. Uh, <laughs> uh, or the genocide run in Undertale, right? Where you have to fight Goat Mom. I don't understand. Yeah. I can't. Nope. <laughs> that That's an option as well, yes. Uh, which I would not saying, I would not recommend to do the option of even yeah. starting up Genocide Run. If anyone knows yeah. my playthrough of Undertale, you know. I will mention this. I have played Undertale once, well, and only once. I got through the neutral route, I got the golden ending, and then I said, okay, that was it. I'm not doing that again. I'm not, because I've never started the Genocide Route. I've never done that before. I never will do that. Yeah. I just, no. <laughs> Self like that, I, I will just say, don't do it. Yeah. I'll say, I love these characters too much. I'm not willing to do that. So, <laughs> but yeah. uh, but yeah, going back to uh, Pokemon, like I mentioned, kind of in the chat room, kind of as a, just a, um, I mentioned this, but one of the guilty pleasures I have is just taking the rival and then just um, giving him some demeaning, insulting nickname. To yeah. a lesser extent, uh, just any Pokemon I catch. Uh, just think of probably the most ill-fitting name that I could possibly think of. Like my Pokemon Sword Let's Play. I catch Eternatus, and the nickname I gave it was Sir Fuzzy Bum. <laughs> oh my god. I, I have so. a question, since you both have played Sword and Shield. Okay. Do you guys consider Sword and Shield a guilty pleasure, just because I know Sword and Shield has gotten... I, I mean, this is also coming from a pre-Legends Arceus mindset, but... Do you both consider Sword and Shield to be a guilty pleasure? Because I, I know a lot of people had a lot to say about Sword and Shield. To be quite honest with you, not really. Not Same. Not saying, not, yeah, I'm kind of on the fence on that one. Um, if you're talking about the base game by itself, probably. But if you throw in the expansions, uh, maybe not. But yeah. that's just me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like... But yeah, I, I kind of agree with DM. Sword and Shield should have been better, but you know, um, take what I can get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, though I'm looking forward to seeing how Scarlet and Violet are going to be. Oh, yeah? Like, I'm very much looking forward to Scarlet and Violet, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, in terms, in, in terms of Pokemon and Guilty Pleasure, for me, um, one, one of the things I really absolutely love is just playing a Pokemon game and then all of a sudden like you randomly find some really cool secrets in some Pokemon games but that's not the guilty pleasure no what's a guilty pleasure for me for Pokemon I'll tell you it's the fact that I I absolutely just love going going playing a game playing a Pokemon game and just saying like uh, just talk, just try to trade Pokemon in general that like to a game that I don't really use. Well, no, no, I no, sorry, I'm I'm jumbling up my words. All right, anyway, so I trade Pokemon from a game that I don't use to the game that I use, and then I just delete the game, de delete the save file, just to have all the starters. I guess you could call that a guilty pleasure because for Pokemon, it's hard to really think of one. Um, yeah, like uh, say, uh, don't mean to cut you off here. Guilty pleasure of mine for Pokemon, and this isn't just Pokemon. This is just RPGs in general. Uh, it's kind of like going to something like what Okami mentioned with the um, the Kingdom Hearts thing that they did is just <clears throat> power leveling to an absurd degree, and just walking in and just 
bitch slapping every opponent that comes in your way <laughs> without any issue. Yeah. I mean, granted, the only the only game I've ever had to do that was Diamond and Pearl. But you know, no Elite Four after Diamond and Pearl ever made me want to rage quit. To be honest. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Diamond and Pearl. Yeah. Like I just have a lot of issues with. Not even just a remake, but also like the original Diamond and Pearl. Like they're um, like but <laughs> like they're just so it's... slow. And... Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's my major issue with it. It's my. I I don't believe there's a bad gen, but honestly, it's my least favorite gen. Even with the remakes, I just couldn't get into it. Yeah. Um. Let's see. For me. Um. Like I don't know. Like. My, my question is, even though I have it in the thumbnail, like, I have, like, this particular character, do you guys consider Parappa the Rapper, um, the Parappa the Rapper, um, a guilty pleasure? I'd be really shocked if somebody told me it was a guilty pleasure, because I'd just be like, Parappa the Rapper's a guilty pleasure? Are you, really? <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just threw it there just to throw it there. Uh, I'm gonna be perfectly honest, I don't have an opinion on this, and that's only because I've never actually played Parappa. The the, the most uh, I've got in terms of uh, experience on that game was playing the Parappa 2 demo on a PS2 demo disc that I had, and that was literally the only experience I've ever had with the game. Yeah, I I've never played <laughs> I've never played it, so... <laughs> I've only played a little bit of it, but I didn't really play a whole lot, but I did enjoy it, though, but it's... Like, it's hard to tell, like, because, um, like, I wonder, is it really a guilty pleasure? I really don't think it is. I just threw it there because I just want to throw something random there pe and and have someone be like, hey, Parappa the Rapper's not a guilty pleasure. That game is great. <laughs> it's it's kind of like to that point, what do you consider, when do you consider a game to be guilty pleasure? Because something I had on my list I was hesitant to bring up, because I know this is going to be really divisive, just, um, but I don't know if, if it's a considered a guilty pleasure anymore or not with age. Is Sonic Adventure 2 a guilty pleasure? Like, no, it's not. But I'll tell you what a Sonic... I'll tell you which Sonic game I consider to be a guilty pleasure. Okay. Sonic 3D Blast. I can understand that one. Now, that's a guilty pleasure because <laughs> when that game came out, um, because there was supposed to be a Sonic game that was supposed to be a 3D based game called Sonic Extreme to compete with both Mario 64 and the first Crash Bandicoot. But the game got canceled. It had it was it had a really rocky development and there was a point where they were going to use this the Knights of the Dreams engine and um former executive from Sega, Yuji Naka, threatened to quit Sega if they used that engine. And then they ended up just coming up with something else, and they tried so many things, and it just ended up not going so well. Oh, I'll get... I have a Mario Party one I'm going to bring up in a moment. Um, uh, yeah, like, for... But for Sonic... So we got Sonic 3D Blast as the game to fill in the void. And it's... It's decent. It's a decent game. It's... it. Pe people hated it because it's not, like, an actual Sonic game. It's not really an actual Sonic game, but I still actually had a good time with that. Um, but it, like, if I, if I, if whenever I think about a guilty pleasure game that's related to Sonic, that's the one, that's the one that I actually think about the most. And it's the first one that comes to mind. And there is one other, um, there is one other one. Sonic R. People- I, I, Another one I understand. I don't know why people hate Sonic R so much. That game is fun. That game is a lot of fun. It has awesome music. It has it, like you you have so many different characters. You have secret characters you can unlock, like the Tails doll. You got um, oh. Me Mecha Knuckles. You got um, the egg the egg Robo Metal Sonic and all that. And if you have all the cam the Chaos Emeralds, you can be Super Sonic. Granted, they don't have that many courses, but the ones they do have are fun to are fun to race on. And I think it's great. Um, Sonic R is fantastic. The important thing, I'd rather have tracks I enjoy racing on than just an overabundance of tracks. Um, the only reason I brought up Sonic Adventure 2 is because, like, in recent years, I, I, I don't know if I'm the only one. I, I doubt I'm the only one that's noticed, but a lot of people are going back and saying, yeah, the game wasn't as good as I remember, but I'm like, because they're like, if you take out the Chow Garden... They, they they say they really it hasn't aged well, but I'm like I, I went back to play it maybe two, three years ago on Steam or something like that, and I'm like, 
aside from levels that you know I, I that are just difficult like the flood like the knuckles level and the flooded mines yeah um i didn't really think you know i i enjoyed the different type of you know i enjoyed the different types of gameplay even if you took out the chow garden so yeah i don't know i kind of feel really weird when people are like that game hasn't aged well because i'm like i has it really not i'm like as nostalgia blinding me like i i don't know how to feel the problem is that with sonic especially with 3d sonic sega doesn't know exactly what to do with 3d sonic anymore um i know like we're gonna get a new one with sonic frontiers that's supposed to change how 3d sonic games are gonna be but jury's still out until like the end of the year we'll see what happens with that but in the case of sonic adventure 2 i started that game like i actually went back to that game like back in november i did adventure one a few months before that i like adventure one more but adventure two i like it better now but i'll say this though i actually don't like the treasure hunting levels with knuckles or rouge though i do think that rouge ha had a much better selection of treasure hunting levels than knuckles does the pro I, the main issue i have is the fact that um, there's no set order as to which um, emerald you have to go for. They're all random all over the place. At least in Adventure 1, there's an, a set order on which one you have to go for first. And so on and so forth. Yeah, I was going to bring up that thing myself. The, the, the main thing with... Um, <clears throat> the main thing with Adventure 2 is that there, there kind of is and there kind of isn't in regards to there being a set order. Because... Um, the the way that the the the, the emerald, emerald radar works is that it will only beep for the the shard that's actually currently in order. If you find a second shard in Adventure Two, uh, you can pick it up, and if it's not the one that the radar is active, you'll you'll it'll still collect it, but the radar won't ping if that's not the. Um, the shard that it's currently attuned to if that makes any sense right so no, I, I um, know that and that in my opinion is weaker than adventure one because at least in that game the the emerald radar will will ping to let you know you're near an emerald shard even if it's not this even if it's not the first one in order it will still let you know hey there's an emerald shard like right near you adventure two doesn't do that yeah. And that's what makes um that's what makes the emerald hunting levels in Adventure 2 s substantially worse. Mm -hmm. At least in my opinion. Um right. and cuz I remember I had a hell of a time cuz I did a couple streams earlier this year uh where part of the incentive was a Sonic Adventure 2 race. I had uh, I did with I believe Starlick and Kaisen. Um and we was um I was the one just doing I was so far behind I'm like I remember telling the guys you guys can just call me catch you guys can just call me Heinz because I'm gonna be playing catch up the rest of this whole game yeah <laughs> so uh, and I just I, there was a point where I got to I believe it was Pumpkin Hill and that was where I ended my run on because I was there for over half an hour and I could not find damn that those damn emerald shards <laughs> i feel like shadow the hedgehog where's that damn fourth chaos emerald <laughs> that line so much <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> at least you gotta at least you do have to admit pumpkin hill is a slapping theme at least you yes. have that oh yeah. yeah yeah pumpkin hell is definitely like a slapping it, it slaps yes um i will say that much um uh do you have any other ones ben like any other like um, guilty pleasures you want to bring up real quick? So this is actually more like games that I've wanted to play, but I've never actually played them. Um, guilty pleasures that I've seen videos of, but these are like games that are just become meme tick in their own right. Typing of the Dead is one of them uh, for like the voice acting. Yeah. Yes. Goldman in particular is just one of those guys that I just I I remember seeing the videos of and it's like uh, uh I've never played it but I I so want to. Yeah. Uh Yeah, I've always wanted to yeah. play them. Like 
there's two that I want to play the most. And that's Typing of the Dead, which is based off the House of the Dead 2. And then there's also the Typing of the Dead Overkill, which they based it off the PS3 version of House of the Dead Overkill. And they're both on Steam. Or at least, or at least I know Overkill's on Steam. I don't know about Typing of the Dead proper, but I'll have to check that out. Uh, let's see. Um, and also, I want to highlight something that was actually brought up in chat like a little while ago because like because dragon actually brought up um two games in general mario party 9 and 10 now why these two in particular because these were the games that introduced the whole like everyone has to team up and they're all in a cart yeah and i will defend mario party 9 i think that game is not that bad i think it's a pretty decent mario party game but 10 no it's not good at all. It's actually like, out of all the console Mario Party games, I think it's the worst one. But nine as a guilty pleasure, sure. I'll, I'll definitely say that. Like, I think that works as a guilty pleasure for Mario Party. Um, I really don't dislike nine. I, I think part of it has to do with at the time my my very close friends and I would play nine, and it was just really funny because we would just come up with jokes like, "Hey, d don't make me turn this, don't make mom turn this car around on the family road trip." Yes. I don't know. I really, I I, I enjoyed it, but it, again, that's probably just because I had friends who played it, and we would just be screaming the whole time. I will fully admit. Yeah. Kind of funny because I've never actually of all the Mario Party mainline games I've never played Mario Party Nine, and I I did pick up Ten, and I will admit that as far as all the Mario Party games that I've ever played, it is definitely the weakest, especially the Bowser Party mode, which is, uh, incredibly one sided. <laughs> it could have been better. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely they had the Bowser Party had potential, but. It, I hope they bring it back and actually make it much, make it a much better experience than what they were originally going for. I just, I, it, it was just a disappointment. And then you had Amiibo Party, which is supposed to be like the older Mario parties, but you, you could only use Amiibos. What's the point? Seriously, what is the point of that? Like, I just... To sell Amiibos? I, <laughs> yeah, because it gets... Yeah, and I remember there being a Donkey Kong amiibo, like a picture of it, but that that particular amiibo did not see release for a, a long while. And let's see, um, I know I have not played this game, but I know a lot of people, but I know like some people who have been playing it recently or have played it in the past. Um, there's some people who will probably consider Quest sixty four to be a guilty pleasure, and I'm like. I don't understand why that game does not look that great. It's because More like I a demo it's... game is the thing. Yeah, I'm gonna say there's. Um, I think one one of the reasons why people consider Quest sixty four a guilty pleasure is because it's one of the few RPGs that the N sixty four actually boasts. Yeah, there's like th so. there's only like three. There's that Paper Mario, and then there's also. Um, uh, I believe it was Ogre Battle 64. Those are the only ones that are on the S64. Because if you wanted RPGs, you would have to go to PlayStation. Yeah. That That's practically how it was back in those days. Um, like, <laughs> there's so many games that are just divisive in regards to Guilty Pleasures. And um, then you also have other games in general that I know... Um, like, like, 3D, like, I already brought up 3D Blast. But... I got another one, um, and it's go and we're going back to Castlevania again, but this time it's a different type of Castlevania game. Um, Castlevania Judgment. It's a fighting game with Castlevania characters, and it was on the Wii. And I think it only ever got one or two good reviews, one of them being from IGN, and then the rest just gave it very low scores. Like, I would see a lot of 3 out of 10s. The game, the game is not a 3 out of... Like, it, at best... It's probably like a 6.5 out of 10, but it's definitely nowhere near a 3. And the thing about it is that um, the characters in the game, they actually use the art style from um, from Death Note. They got the artist from Death Note to draw the, all the cast of characters. He, he redesigned all of them. So all the characters look like they came from Death Notes. 
So say I again yeah. never not knowing a thing about Castlevania, but I will say, I did give Death Note a try years and years ago. Uh, oh boy, but I'm hoping that's I, I would probably enjoy this story probably a lot more than Death Note. Yeah, but it's just really a fighting game where you have different characters fighting each other from different like Castlevania timelines. Um, there's a secret character, but you have to have a a DS game to link up, which is. Yeah. Castlevania Order of Ecclesia, which they both came out around the same time. So you get the character from that game, and then, like, it. I don't see this game ever getting re released. Like, the game did not sell well either. I have it, though. Um, it's a it's a decent game. It's fun, but it's not like. It's, it's not like something that is going to blow people away, but I had fun with it. I will say, if a game is a 3 out of 10 to me. Um, I, I consider the game has to be near broken. Like, not just your cup of tea. I, I have to consider the game to be almost completely broken to have a 3 out of 10. Yeah. Like, and and also, and, and also like, the other thing is, I, I've seen so many people bring up, like, different different games in general. Um, but now I have, I have a question that I want to ask. Oh. Well, both of you. Um, have you ever felt ashamed to admit that you like a certain game to other people? I already have one in mind, to be perfectly honest. And what would that be? Fable 3. Oh. I'm waiting for a brick to go through my window, to be honest, whenever I say it out loud. Well, um, <laughs> I've never played any of the Fable games, so... It's, it's hard, because, I mean, granted, I haven't played Fable 3 since... It came out because there's like no way to play it now. There's no way to play Fable 2. There's like no way to play Fable 3 unless you have the originals. So I can't even go back and and try to re-experience it now that it's been years later. The only thing I recall from Fable 3 that I didn't like was the ending. But I, I do remember enjoying the rest of the game. So especially when the game came out, everyone was like, oh, it was so bad. And I was like, I was like, wait, really? <laughs> Yeah. What about what about you, Ben? Uh so actually this is a good point on um what I think uh Shnezkov psychology. Uh, oh, and we're getting a raid from Retro Gamer Kevin. Raiders? Thanks, um, Kevin. But yeah. Um but one of the um questions that they they brought up was uh why be ashamed of something that you enjoy and like uh because i'll tell you why one of those games could potentially be uh, more adult in nature and uh something that you might uh not want people knowing that you want to that you play <laughs> yeah and so and it goes hand in hand with the fact that like let's say if you like a certain game and all of a sudden like um, you want to talk about it with your friends, and then all of a sudden, other people laugh at you. Like, let's say in school, especially bullies, like laugh at you and all that. Like, personally, for me, it doesn't really affect me in any way. Like, at this point, like, um, I don't really let anyone get to me like that. So, when it comes to my own taste in video games, um, I'm not really ashamed of anything. I'll just, I'll just talk about it, and if people want to like discuss if the game is good or not. I'm always happy to do it, but I'm never going to go out of my way to shame somebody for something. Like I, I will admit, though I'm going to hold myself accountable to this. I used to do this in the past, though I know for a fact that it's it's it was wrong for me to judge people on the games they played back then, and it's wrong for me to do it, and it's wrong for not just me but anyone to do it now. So for me, like to do that is not something I should do. I will say that much. But I've also been, but but there have been a lot more instances where I've been on the receiving end of the other side, where like I would get I would get constantly judged on the games that I that I would like to play. It used to affect me; it doesn't affect me now, and I won't let it affect me. So I'll just be like, "Oh, I like this game," or "I like that game," and just move on. Like even even at the game, even if the game isn't even that great, it doesn't really matter to me. Like so. And I, 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 I might as well just highlight this that the comment that Snezkov made because it, it's it's definitely a good point that that they they've actually made. 
Like, why exactly would anybody want to be like if, if you're ashamed of something? That's one. But you don't want to if you don't want to admit to something. That's one thing. But if you're like worried about like anything, yeah, it's valid to worry about some of the stuff that people could potentially say to you. But just know that whatever games you like, as long as it makes you happy, even if the game is not really all that great, whatever makes you happy, that's what's more important to me than anything else in regards to how other people feel. I agree with that, because even if a game is quote-unquote a, a, a bad game, the thing is, somebody somewhere, and a, like more than one, obviously, but somebody somewhere is going to find something of value in that game. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't understand why somebody would personally attack that. I mean, I, at least for me in recent experience, because I'm a very heavy Genshin Impact player, I've, I've had people throw, you know, I've had people throw the, the term dead, you know, dead game at me. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, if you don't like it, that's fine. But why are we throwing... Why are we throwing insults at me for quote unquote playing a dead game that is not Hell, dead? I was, I was playing Genshin earlier this morning. I'm like, this is a dead game? <laughs> the hell with that? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Since that new update came out and people are, you know, clamoring over Twitter from what I've seen. Yeah, okay, sure, it's a dead game. Yeah, and and system malfunction also brings up a good point. Same, like to follow up with that what Saskop said. I mean, if you like a game, you like a game. Who cares what other people think? Goes with a movie, TV show, etc. Even music, no matter what medium. Same thing. Like exactly what you want to like. And that's all that matters. About the work that went into the game. Even if it's... Even if it if even if it's not a complete game, it feels like you just think about it. You know, people really did work on this. So, you know, people had there was a passionate team behind it. They wanted to make they wanted to make something special. That's why I don't like. I I usually prefer to say a game is not my cup of tea. Not that this game is like not saying you know people that are just be like oh this game is garbage. Mm -hmm. Like no, I'm like I won't say that. I just not my thing. But I can't say something's garbage when somebody works so hard on it and I'm just kind of like, you think you can do better? Be my guest. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely agree with you on that. Um, like, there there are games in which that I haven't played, but I've heard like the reputation of so many different games. Like, for example, as Top Dog mentioned, Mario & Luigi Paper Jam. The only Mario & Luigi games that I've actually played were the original, which I've beaten, and... Um, Partners in Time, which I could not, I could not really get into it. I actually did not like. I did not enjoy playing Partners in Time. What the game is so slow, but I know that one is divisive. A lot, there's a lot more people who consider that one to be like the worst game in the series. Like they, they debate between that one and Paper Jam. I can't really say much about Paper Jam, but that was near door. I do need to go back to it, but I did not really enjoy what I played of it compared to Superstore Saga. But some people will say that. that or some people will say Origami King is bad. And people that haven't even played Origami King will say it's bad. And I'm like, yeah. but you you outwardly said you haven't tried it. Yeah. Like just yeah. try it. I've seen videos of Origami King and I will say that compared to Sticker Star and Color Splash, Origami King actually looks rather fun to me. Yeah. Um. Uh, I've I, I've never actually played it, but I I would like to pick it up and play it at some point. Uh, has one who's played every game of the Mario and Luigi franchise. I will freely admit that yes, Partners in Time is probably the weakest of the series. The second one being Dream Team, and that's only because uh, while I have played all five games, the only one I have not actually ever finished was Dream Team. And that was only because of the fact that I could not get used to the motion controls on some of those attacks. There, there's, uh, there was, what, one battle? I think it was the Z Keeper that I am, I'm stuck on, on that game. And that's only because of the fact that I just I cannot get used to. Now, uh, that that was why I love Paper Jam because Paper Jam did bring back those moves the the same the same exact moves and specials that were in dream team were brought back for paper jam but what makes paper jam better is that it removes the motion control requirement you can actually use the stick to 
to control the characters. Whereas with Dream Team, it was motion control only. You couldn't turn off those motion controls. Yeah. And it was something that I couldn't get 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 around. So, um, so yeah, paper uh, partners in time to me is is probably the weakest. But if if there was you know Dream Team is probably a very close second, if not on the same level. To yes. Me. Right. So. See, for me, that that same problem for me is the problem I have with Star Fox Zero. But I also have like really bad oh, motion sickness. Yeah. But I, for the life of me, I can't look at the gamepad and look back up because I legitimately get dizzy. That was the that was one of the problems I had with Star Fox Zero. It wasn't so much dizziness. It was just the fact that I'm trying to like you know, my eyes are trying to flick between back and forth between two two screens, uh, gamepad and TV. And it just got to a point to where I'm like, okay, I'm like literally trying to hold the gamepad up. I'm just going to use this as an object thing. I actually have my gamepad right here. <laughs> but I'm like literally trying to hold my gamepad up at the same level as the TV just so I could try to play the darn game and uh, see what the heck I'm trying to do. And it's just uh, ain't working, man. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. I, I have motion sickness to the point that, like, I couldn't even play, like, you know, back in the day. I couldn't play my Game Boy in the car because I'd get very sick. So, like, you know, adult me who has even worse motion sickness now, like, I can't even be on roller coasters trying to do this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to, like, go take a walk because uh, the wor the room is spinning. Yeah, I tend to get some motion sickness, but it depends on... What I'm playing, like in games, it depends on the game I'm playing. Um, though, I tend to get more motion sickness in a lot of things outside of video games, more so than when I'm playing video games. But that's more of a me thing, rather than, like, anything else. But, as far as uh, as far as far being ashamed about something, I'll, I'll, br I'll bring up something. Um, when Animal Crossing came out, or on the GameCube... Um, I've, I've had some people who said some, who threw some shade at me back when, like, it was new at the time, like, cause it's GameCube and actually, I'm actually going to go as far as saying this, actually liking the GameCube back in high school used to get me bullied at times. Like not, not, not so, not super bad, but I've actually said some, I actually had some people say some really nasty things. People actually use some slurs as well regarding the GameCube. And I'm like, what like the it's a it's a video game console like what's so bad about it and they always say oh gamecube is for kids and all that stuff because around that time like the most popular console was the playstation 2 and there were also some kids who who like xbox because like for xbox like in my school my experience is the amount of people who enjoyed xbox there were people who thought the gamecube was for kids like they're, they feel like they're too old for gamecube but they're too edgy for PS2, so they go with Xbox. And I'm not even I'm not even doing shit at Xbox fans at the time either. Like the thing is that Xbox, um, from what I have experienced, I, ne I never actually own an Xbox original. But what I but from the experiences that I had with it was not bad. Was not bad in retrospect. I just only I had GameCube, I had PlayStation Two, and Game Boy Advance, and I felt that was enough for me. Sure, I might have missed out on a couple of experiences with the original Xbox. But when it comes to GameCube, the thing is there was a lot of people like I know now the GameCube is a lot more respected because of the fact that there's so many people who have nostalgia for GameCube and we're already at the point where we're at GameCube nostalgia. But here's the thing. Back then, there were people who hated GameCube. There were people who wanted Nintendo to go the same way that Sega went. They just wanted they just wanted like Nintendo to make games like for the other for the other platforms because they did not like the GameCube at the time. They like Xbox, they like PlayStation 2. And there were people just making fun of those who like GameCube. It's like, oh, you're gonna play a game system for kids. Well, guess what? Um GameCube had a lot of really great games, and some games that were on GameCube and PlayStation 2 usually the GameCube version or the Xbox version would be better. Case in point, Sonic Heroes. Don't get me wrong. Sonic Heroes is okay. I wasn't too crazy about the game. But 
It runs a lot better on GameCube and Xbox compared to PlayStation 2. PlayStation 2, there's a lot of frame rate issues and some other some other issues the games has compared to the GameCube version or the Xbox version. And usually whenever like they do screenshots for like multi-platform games, they always go with the Xbox version because it looks the nicest out of all three. But yeah. But GameCube was actually a pretty good system. Like GameCube had eternal darkness. I'm just saying, when y'all are like, oh, it's for kids. I'm like, okay. It you're got, forgetting about a few things here. It got Resident Evil 4 first. Like, take that. It has Metroid Prime. It has, like, that game is phenomenal. Um, there's so many games. Like, Smash, Super Smash Bros. Melee had a T rating. Then again, so did Brawl. But, um, yeah. but yeah. Like, I felt that, I felt that, like, they were kind of they were kind of making some games like more catered towards all like they were making making games catered towards all, all audiences. The only reason people really hated the GameCube back then was because Super Mario Sunshine was not what people wanted, and Wind Waker turned so many people off on the GameCube like that. I remember the controversy on that. Ugh. It pissed so <laughs> many people off back then. Like, Kitty, what is with this art style? I'm never playing a Zelda game again. And then, and 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 then it turns out that it's actually one of the more respected um, games in the series, and it's aged better than Twilight Princess. I will yeah. say that it does. It does. Twilight, even with the HD version, Twilight Princess did not hold up as well as Wind Waker does. Hell, even Skyward Sword looks better than than Twilight Princess. I mean, I can't, I have, I, Skyward Sword's my favorite game, so don't even, don't say it, because I'll get started on my three-hour thesis on Skyward well, Sword. Well, I, I, I didn't really get into Twilight Princess, but I want to actually play it at some point. Same thing for, um, same thing for, like, um, Majora's Mask. Those are the two 3D Zelda games I gotta do. And, um, I'm gonna highlight a comment that System Malfunction said right now, because I also agree with this one. Um, reminds me of when people would ask me, why are you still gaming in your 30s? Gaming is for kids. Um, who do you think develops the games? Kids? No. Adults create video games. Yes. Exactly. Why it's another I... form of entertainment. I, you know, it, there's so many forms of entertainment. There's TV. I mean, I, I don't get the whole, you know. <laughs> Again, I'm also thinking, like, in my mindset, I'm just remembering. I was the only kid in my school, um that played like pokemon past gen 3 and i used to get bullied for that and it's like i don't first i don't get this whole mindset you're too old for games i'm sorry i yeah like i don't get this whole mindset of people feeling like they out they have outgrown like some of the things that they love i mean if if, if you're not, if it's not something that you're interested in anymore that's one thing but to, but to mock people saying oh Oh, you still you still like this? Th like this stuff's for kids. I used to like this as a kid, but I'm an adult now, and I'm like, okay. And what do you like to do? And then I'm like, um, see, that's the thing. Don't judge people for what for what they like. You don't like it when people judge you for what you like too. Like, that's the thing. Like, just at the end of the day, just enjoy what you enjoy. Like, like don't don't like. You have every right not to be interested in something, but don't go out of your way to judge somebody for like for what they enjoy. But that's like that. Hamtaro, Ham Ham, Heartbreak on the GBA by my entire class. I never played them, but I've actually watched the show and I've enjoyed it a lot. It's so good. Yes, <laughs> I will say it's the best GBA game. I, I'm coming in with a hot take. Mm, now that's a hot take right there. Um, <laughs> what about you, Ben? Like, um, like, how do you feel about people judging others based on what they enjoy? And fuck the hell off. Exactly. I will put it at that. I will keep it at that, just as succinctly as possible. And say, take <laughs> take your bigotry and get back on your high horse and fuck the hell right off. Yep. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's called, and like System said, it's called being an adult and working your ass off for a living and being able to enjoy your life. Just enjoy your life. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, like, that's the thing. Because I've seen so many people mention um, different things in general about, um, about 
the games they enjoy. And and a lot of people have brought up so many great points, but that said, for me, um, I'm just happy to enjoy the games that I really like. Like, cause I love Nintendo games. I love um, Mega Man. I love Capcom. I love Sega. I love so many different games. Like, the only things I'm I'm not really into sports games like that. That's really what I'm like in terms of like simulated sports. Those are like the main things I'm not into. But I'm practically Same. into I'm practically into almost everything else. Um, I remember back. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. I'm just fine. thinking back to my uh, my late mother. Uh, there was one person who I remember I was playing I don't remember what I was playing that evening but I was playing something um, but I overheard one person one of our guests asking my mom like he's in his teenagers why do you still let him continue to play video games and I remember my mom mentioning to to them well for one He's not out partying. He's not out smoking. He's not out drinking. I know where he is. <laughs> Why should I judge him for something that that appeals to him? <laughs> so I'm like, ah, uh, oh, I miss you, old lady. <laughs> oh yeah. Crazy therapist tell my mother when I was a kid that yeah she's addicted to video games. You have to limit her uh, limit her to like one hour a day. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, but. I, listen, I was bullied in school constantly. Video games were my, again, they were my escape. And it's like you know whether you're in, you know where, you know whether you're an adult now working, working your ass off essentially, and this is what you do when you come home, you know, because you know you gotta go in and do it again. If this is how, you know, this is how you choose to relax on your off time, or like for me, I'm chronically ill. I I can't work, but like. You know, if I need to get transfusions or, you know, more, you know, col colonoscopies are fun, let me tell you that. Um, if I need a distraction from not eating all day, you know, this, you know, or from pain because I have to deal with pain. Video games are what I do. It's a good distraction. I yeah. feel like nobody should judge you for that. Yeah. It's always good to have a distraction, especially in games that you know for a fact that will help you. Like, and believe me, I have my fair share of games. Of games that help me go through so many things like Earth Balance One, Breath of the Wild, um, and the list goes on and on. So many games that help get me through some really tough moments in my life. So, yeah. so <laughs> this just—I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, no, go ahead, you first. Just because you brought up Breath of the Wild, and I have to ask because this ties into the question you asked earlier that people are like, "Don't do it," but you do it. Hey, who here has found all the Korok seeds? Just out of curiosity. Nope. I have not, and that's only because of the fact that I've got better things to do with my time than just. <laughs> and I, I kind of want to. I've, I've seen. I've seen what. I've seen exactly um, what they give you, and I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, same here. I'm just a I mean, Zelda addict. Don't mind me. I need something to do until Breath of the Wild Two comes out. It I'm not hating. If if anyone wants to do a completionist thing where they they go around getting like all the um the 900 Korok seeds, getting all the the shrines, getting all of the you know, you know that's on them. I mean, I'm not gonna hate on anyone doing that. Mm -hmm. Of course, my cat wants to freaking hog the camera and tell me, hey, uh, I'm hungry. Give me something to eat. Like I'm I'm busy right now, Cinder. I'll get you something here in a minute. Yep. Um. And say, if anyone wants to do the uh, the completionist route, uh, you know, hey, that's cool. I'm 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 totally fine with that. Um, I have no problem with people wanting to do, you know, hundred percenting a game. Um, but for me, I'm like, I'm I'm cool with just getting from point A to point B, and you know, kicking the boss's teeth in and calling it a day. <laughs> on stuff what you like want, that. it's your game. It's your free time. Mm -hmm. Exactly, uh, and and I even mentioned like if if I do uh, if I do Breath of the Wild on stream next after a Thousand Year Door, uh, I have made it pretty much abundantly clear that uh, the nine hundred Koax seeds is uh, the hell with that. <laughs> Just, they, they <laughs> to do all out. the shrines, there's one thing to do all the Koax seeds. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, uh, I w I will be going for all eighteen memories. If if nothing else, I will be getting that because I understand that getting the memories is, um, is what you call it, um, required for the best ending. But um, that's as, at least as far as completionist c 
completionism goes. I will be getting all 18 memories. Uh, I will probably try to do the Champions Ballad DLC. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get around to doing that before I defeat the final boss. Mm -hmm. And that's only because of the fact that I know that by getting the Champions Ballad, uh, we unlock the Master Cycle for that. Yeah. So uh, I want to get I want to get that off just so I can kind of be able to roar around high roll on a ancient motorcycle. That I think that'd be fun as hell. But yep. um, beyond that, though, um, I don't really have anything in regards to uh, other goals that I want to take care of on on that game. Yeah. So I was like, I was just. Kind of getting a little mini rant, like kind of lost my train of thought there. <laughs> it, no, no, it's all good. It's all good. I started it with the co rock. Sorry. Anytime Zelda, no, yeah, that's me. Anytime Zelda's mentioned, I'm like, where? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was I was in the bathroom last night hearing the song of time, and I thought I was going crazy. It turned out our roommate was playing Ocarina of Time, but I thought I was just going insane finally. Yeah. But yeah, like, um, so I want to ask I want to ask the both of you, like. Let's do let's do one more um, guilty pleasure game. Like uh, Ben, you go first. What's your what's your guilty pleasure? Uh, so DM was brave enough to mention this in the chat room. I was thinking about this, but I didn't mention this. Uh, Honey Pop, which is a game that you can't actually stream on Twitch. Yes, very few uh, you can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know, like, it has a lot of suggestive themes that um i know that does, that does not go well on twitch yeah so yeah I, i've heard of it haven't played it it's really not the type of uh, game i would personally play but if you enjoy it more power to you uh to a, to a slightly lesser extent this is a, another one of those games that i've been kind of curious to look into and i'm kind of surprised it hasn't been uh put it on Twitch. I, I want to say it was Sen, Sengoku Basara, I think is the title if I'm not mistaken. I'd have to double check that. Those are uh, like... I've heard of it. Yeah, those are basically like Capcom's version of the Warriors games, except they when they come here, like there was only two of them that came here and they did not sell well. The first one uh, was on PS2 called Devil Kings and then the second one was on PS3 and Wii um, Sengoku Basara Samurai Heroes, I believe is what it's called. And... See. Yeah, it, it, it's something totally different. It's it's not. I mean, that that is a game. That is a series I am looking into. But th this was something completely different. This is something more along the lines of I completely forgot what this game was called. But um, it's it's very much in the style of the. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is kind of suggestive and probably shouldn't be streamed on Twitch here. <laughs> if 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 I. If I think of the title, I'll let you know about it um, in right. private at some point. All right. But I, I just I can't remember off the top of my head what it was. <laughs> I just was like, was it this title? Well, let me look this up. I, no, <laughs> it wasn't. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, uh, last guilty pleasure in gaming, like I said, Honey Pop. That's pretty much the one I was going to think of. <laughs> I was thinking of that one, but I wasn't going to say it until it was mentioned in chat. So, yeah. What about you, Okami? Oh man, see, this one's hard because I brought up all the main ones. Um, I I can think of like some older Digimon games that are really janky, mm -hmm. but because it's Digimon, I I, I kind of look past it. Like the old Digimon World games, um, I really enjoy them. I just can't rem the life of me. I can't remember the exact ones. Um. Because now that I'm running out, now that now M me is thinking, does Mario Sunshine count as a guilty pleasure? Like, see, now I feel like I'm grasping at straws here <laughs> because I'm like, uh, I'm looking around here, like, uh, there's gotta be something. <laughs> does Hey You Pikachu count? Yes. <laughs> there we go. I'll go with Hey You Pikachu. Yeah, but uh, also this. I'm sorry. No, no. I, I found the title of the uh, thing. It was Senran Kagura. That was where I was. Oh, Senran Kagura. Uh, yeah. Like, I actually know yeah. some people who enjoy that series. But, yeah. Like, it's not as suggestive as um, as Honey Pop. The only one... Yeah. The, the, on, the only one that is very suggestive 
It was like it looked. It was like a glorified tech demo on the Switch. Well, you squeeze the Joy-Con. I'm like, why? Yeah. Like, I honestly yeah. just find that to be complete cringe. To be honest, I. Uh, anyway, I, it's kind of. I'm just thinking of all the jokes with the when the Wii came out with Mario Party and certain mini games. Anyway, my brain just went there. I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's just. I'm an adult. I swear. And also what and, and also one two switch yeah yeah like I guess one two switch could be a guilty pleasure for some people but not for me um uh last I I, I do want to bring up something before I get to my last one uh, I do want to bring up something regarding Digimon like is what I was doing um last year I was doing a um a second round of PlayStation One fighting games and I was playing Digimon Rumble Arena one and it's actually in interesting like it's not a bad game it's it's decent but it's like if it was a smash Bros. style game but with a round system that's practically what it was um not bad not a bad game it's just um it's very weird it's also a late ps1 game as well like 2002 when ps2 was already out um but yeah um for for my last guilty pleasure that I want to bring up is a game that was on Super Nintendo and this company the company LJN is famous for making so many bad games but for once they made a game that's not bad that's not bad at all like in fact it was actually really good what game is that Spider-Man and Venom in Maximum Carnage now that game I is I do not know that one yeah, because that, yeah, that's a fun game. <laughs> so it's a beat 'em up where at points you play as Spider Man and at points you play as Venom. Um, so it's an adaptation of a fourteen part comic book series called Maximum Carnage that took fourteen Spider Man issues within like that summer to the fall, and it was all about Carnage escaping prison, finding a couple of random villains like that made their debut or at least made like like there were just kind of niche villains that fit in with the vibe that carnage had spider-man teamed up with venom black cat captain america and a couple of other like random heroes to fight against carnage and um and his goons and it it stretched for 14 parts and they condense all of that into a single game where like but the only characters you play also spider-man and venom and it's only one player. Though they have assist characters, you have to find you have to find icons and then you can just use them. But um, it follows the story of the game, um, and then eventually it gets to a point where like you fight, um, where like you only you can switch between Spider Man and Venom, and then you can um, fight Carnage. But the game itself, it's a little bit slow paced for beat 'em up, but it's still pretty fun to play. And it was actually pretty solid. The music is great too, like fantastic. I'd say, music. yeah, Green Jelly was the one responsible for the soundtrack. They were, yes. Uh, uncredited demo from Black Sabbath as well with the boss fight. <laughs> oh yeah. So, but it it was actually it was actually a game that I'm that I had I got it for for Sega Genesis when I was a kid, and then it's um one of those games where like I know that I've enjoyed it and but. There are people who probably enjoyed it. There are people who probably didn't, but that that's just it. Because um, LGN, like for for an LGN game, because they they were known like back in the eighties and in early to mid nineties for making really bad games, or at least publishing really bad games. But then it's like this is like the one time that there was a good game outside outside of the wrestling games that they actually did. But this is like the one time that they actually released a good game, and it's like. There we go. Sometimes it takes a long time just to get to the end of that road. Um, like as, as some people will say, there's gold at the end of the rainbow. That's the gold. But you just have to get through all the really crappy games to get there. You said just now, like Digimon had that problem for a really long time where uh, it had the better anime, in my opinion. But the games were really, you know, the games weren't considered great. Mm -hmm. I, you know, like I mentioned, but 
recently that's turned around with um, Digimon Cyber Sleuth um, New World Order, and now we have to see how Digimon Survive is going to play out, but if it's anything like the games have been going, I'm, you know, it's looking like to be a visual novel and almost like a Fire Emblem turn-based kind of game, but hey, mm -hmm. if I'm I'm waiting to see. I'm really optimistic. You know, hope you know, it's like you said. You know, sometimes you start. You know, they can start off really rocky, but then as it goes on, time goes on. Hey, you're kind of surprised. Exactly. I need to get back to doing Cyber Sleuth. I started streaming that at some point, and I didn't get very far in it. <laughs> so. It's so I will recommend it highly. It is, and not just because I love Digimon, but it's it's honestly it's such a good JRPG that I think is really underrated, and more people need to play. Even if this is your first introduction to Digimon, it's fine. Believe me, just do it. <laughs> Say so, you know, um, I I've played a few Digimon games before. I remember playing the first Digimon World, and that was uh, an experience. <laughs> uh, no, that's a good way to. That's what I was mentioning before. Yeah, that, that's how I would describe it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So, um, I guess that's gonna do it for um for this episode for gaming's guilty pleasures is the as the episode being for sharing with Shell Shock, um. First of all, I want to thank both you guys for coming in, Okami, Mr. Ben. Um, I have one last question. So, Okami, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me um, over here on Twitch. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter. And uh, I just started a YouTube channel recently where all the old VODs are being um, put up there, if that is your thing. Um, so, yeah, you can find me at those three places. Yep. And what about you, Ben? Where can we find you? Same thing. I'm going to be found on Twitch at, um, you know, Mr. Ben. That's M-I-S-T-A-H. Because apparently Mr. was taken already. Yep. Uh, but yeah, Mr. Ben. Um, you can find me on YouTube. Um, and my Twitter handle is at Drakengard. So... Uh, and in fact, um, I'm going to be going on stream here in a few minutes uh, with some more Thousand Year Door. After nice. I feed this little furry butt and maybe get some food myself. Yep. So jealous. So, so yeah. Yep. So if you want to follow them, here, here are their socials. So feel free to go and drop the follow and and spread some love over the to both Okami and Ben. Um, as for me, um, you can follow as for me, you can find me like um, obviously here, but also um, on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, um, YouTube. Same username, Shellshock Prime, and where like every day, like Monday through Thursday, as I usually just do like my daily streams, where it's single player playthroughs, or like uh, I do multiplayer with other people, retro nights, and all that. Um, but yeah, um, that's it for for this episode. Um, the next episode should be happening soon. Um, I don't know which one it is yet because like, I have a couple other ones scheduled, but I have to figure out exactly what the next one is. But that's it. Bye now. Take care, everybody.